Okay, calculus students. Sorry I'm not with you today, but uh, we're going to charge on. and We're still in this unit four, exponential logarithmic functions. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to graph exponential functions. So bear with me. It's been a while since I taught virtually. So we're going to graph. That's my topic. Graph exponential functions. And let's see. The equation, the general form, I will say f of x equals b to the x. Which you've seen. You, you've seen uh, exponential before. You've seen them. They look like uh, y equals 2 to the x. Y equals 2. 1 half to the x. You, you, we've played with exponential before. B is considered the base. So there's a b. There's a b. Now, you're going to see where the author is talking about an A and a B. And it's not going to be very clear with this problem right here where the A is. So really, I, I just need you to look at the B. It's a 2. And 2 is greater than 1. 2 is greater than 1. That means I know that this will be an exponential growth. All exponential growth problems look like this. They are have a horizontal asymptote. And then as you approach to the right forever, as you approach to infinity, f of x approaches to infinity, goes up forever. That's what it means to be a growth. Well, how am I going to graph this? All I really care about is realizing that 2 to the x does not shift up or down. If y equals 2 to the x plus 0, that means it doesn't go up and it doesn't go down. That means the horizontal asymptote has to be the x-axis. I just need to get one very good point. And I will take what happens when x is 0. When x is 0, I get 2 to the 0. Anything to the 0 power is 1. So when x is 0, I have that dot here. And since 2 was bigger than 1, it's going to be a growth. I know for a fact that it's going to go up this way. I could do better and get extra points, but I don't have to. Now, as I go to the left forever and ever and ever, I will approach the horizontal asymptote. So that's my basic graph of an exponential. So when b is greater than 1, we call it exponential growth, and it's increasing as I go to the right. If b is less than 1, 1 half is less than 1, it's going to be a decay. And also, take a look at this, f of x is 1 half to the x plus 0 again. That means it doesn't go up or down. It never shifts up. It never shifts down. So, horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. And if I plug in x equals to 0 again to see what happens, I get 1 half to the 0 power. And anything to the 0 power is still 1. So I also have an ordered pair at 0, 1. But it's a decay. This is a decay. Decay means that as I go to the right forever, it's getting lower and lower and lower. But to the left forever and ever and ever, it's going to go up. So that's a good generic graph. So now we're going to do some more of these, and we're going to try to describe the usual. Is it a growth? Is it a decay? What's the domain? What's the range? 
What's the y-intercept? That means when x equals to 0. I'm always going to do that. The asymptote will always be a horizontal asymptote. We will describe the interval of increasing, the interval of decreasing, if it, if it has one. Remember, we're only going from left to right. And behavior will be as x approaches to infinity. What does f of x approach to? As x approaches negative infinity, what does f of x approach to? We've done this before. So the problem we're going to start with is 3 to the x. This is not any different than we just got done doing. 3 is greater than 1. Therefore, it's a growth. When x equals to 0, we know f of x equals to 1 because 3 to the 0 is 1. So over here, here's my 0, 1. It's a growth, so I know it's going to go this way. Nice, smooth curve. Now, if you really want more detail, you could talk about x being a 2, and that gives you 3 squared is 9. Well, that would change my picture a little bit, because at 2, 1, 2, 3, 4... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I guess I should have thought about 3 being a big number, that the generic graph looks like that, but in the actually, this graph's got to go a little steeper because 3 is a big number. So it becomes a vertical stretch. So go ahead and add one more point just to make it prettier. And then there is my better curve. This is what I do when I just want a fast sketch just to see, well, what does it look like? But in reality, 2 comma 9 would be another good point to use. So good students would want to make it look better. So it's a growth. Growth. The domain, if you look very carefully, as I go to the left forever, every x is being used. As I go to the right forever, even though it's steep, Eventually, every x will be used. It goes forever. So how do we do that? We say uh, negative infinity to infinity. Now, the range is the y values, and we know that I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals to 0, but it does go up forever. So what I'm going to say is it cannot equal 0, but it can go up to infinity, but it can't be equal to infinity either. And the y-intercept would be 0, 1. And the asymptote is y equals to 0. This function does increase on its entire domain. So it increases from negative infinity to infinity, from left to right. Never, it never decreases. As x goes to infinity, f of x goes up to the infinity. As x goes left forever, negative infinity, f of x approaches 0, because that's the horizontal asymptote. As x approaches negative infinity, the y value approaches 0. Let's do a decay. How do I know it's a decay? 1 third is less than 1, so it's a decay. I also know that when x equals to 0, I know y equals to 1. Well, Let's go ahead and add x equals to 1. See what happens if x is 1. 1 third to the 1 is 1 third. So I can plot those two points and say, oh, I have 0, 1. Then I have 1 comma 1 third. Well, that's not very exciting. 1 comma 1 third is about here. Wow, look at that. As I go to the right, it must be going down. Well, of course, it's a decay because that's one-third. So we know that the function is going to go down to the right and approach the asymptote of y is 0. And as I go to the left, it's going to go now. If you want to put a negative x just to see what happens when x is a negative 1, one-third to the negative 1 really means uh, 3. You can use your calculator if you want. So as I go to negative 1, 1, 2, 3, it's going to go up there. 
So you can get a couple more points there. There's my decay. You see how it falls to the right? All right, let's see. It is a decay. It's domain. I got a little secret for you. All exponential functions have domain all real numbers. So if you want to do all real numbers, that's the same thing. The range, though, is not all real numbers. The range starts at the horizontal asymptote, which is zero, and then goes up forever. The y-intercept, since I didn't shift it left or right or up or down, zero, one is its y-intercept. And y equals to zero still is the horizontal asymptote. Increases? Nope. None. Decreases? Yes. Negative infinity to infinity. As x approaches infinity, y approaches zero. As x approaches infinity to the right forever, y approaches zero. As x approaches negative infinity to the left, y approaches infinity. All right, there's your first set. Let's move on. Got a couple more here. Not very exciting. It's not exciting at all. Two fifths is still less than one, therefore, it's still a decay. When x is zero, two fifths to the zero is still one. So, zero, one is still, again, an ordered pair. Since it's a decay, we know that this function is going to go down to the right. As it goes to the right, we know it's going to go up. Feel free to try another x. x is 1. 2 fifths to the 1 is 2 fifths. So I know when right here it's 2 fifths, it's going to be down here. And if you were to go and put x as a negative 1 and find out what happens here, you would find out that it's two and a half. So it actually is steeper than what I have here. Should have been one, two and a half. Should be more up here. So you can adjust it. Where did I get that point from? I said let x equals to a negative one. Two fifths to the negative one really means five over two, which is 2.5. Right. Boring answers. These are all the same answers we just had the uh, last couple of problems. It's a decay. Its domain is still all real numbers. Its range is 0 to infinity. Its y-intercept is 0, 1. Its asymptote is y is 0. It's not increasing, but it is decreasing from negative infinity to infinity. As x goes to infinity, f of x goes to zero. As x goes to negative infinity, y goes to infinity. I hope this one's a little more exciting because I'm getting kind of bored. All right, I wrote over my problems, so... All right, it's going to be a very, very, very steep growth. How do I know? 4 is greater than 1. And it's a big number. So we know there's going to be a vertical stretch. So it's growth. When x is 0, 4 to the 0 is 1. When x is 1, 4 to the 1 is 4. So why don't I plot those two points right now? 0, 1. And then four, 1, 4. Very steep, like I said. And since it's a growth, we know that to the left, it goes down to the asymptote. To the right, it's going to go up like that. I almost missed it, but it's close enough. It's a growth. Domain is negative infinity to infinity. Range is 0 to infinity. 0, 1 is the y-intercept. 
and y equal to zero is your horizontal asymptote. It increases all the time from left to right. So it increases from negative infinity to infinity, and it never decreases as x approaches infinity, it means to the right forever, f of x approaches to infinity. As x approaches to the left forever, f of x approaches zero. All right, let's move on. Oops, didn't mean to do that. E, you've seen the number E before. E is an irrational number. Also, if you want to get really fancy, it's transcendental. Transcendental. It's, it's one of those weird numbers that we notify it as a an E. Approximate value will be approximately 2.718, but it goes on forever. That's why it's irrational. It goes on and on and on and on. Exponential functions with base E are called natural base. And we use them a lot in real world applications. We use base E a lot in science. In physics, and in chemistry. Let me write f of x equals e to the x. The base is e, so f of x is approximately 2.718 to the x. And since 2.718 is greater than 1, it is a growth. And just like I did on the other problems, it, since 2.718 uh, to the 0 power is 1, then I know at 0, it still goes there. 0, 1 is still going to be the uh, y-intercept. Now, if I want to know what happens when x is 1, just take another point, well, e to the 1 is just e, so that's 2.7. So if I go to 1, it's about here. So there's my growth. There's my beautiful growth. And, and it, since it did not shift up or down, it's still going to go just like the other exponential growth problems growth. All real numbers. Range. Y is greater than 0. 0, 1 is my y-intercept. And the horizontal asymptote still is y equals to 0. And it increases everywhere from negative infinity to infinity. And this one never decreases as x approaches infinity to the right forever, f of x approaches infinity goes up forever. As x approaches negative infinity, f of x, that's to the left forever, approaches zero. All right, there's your first part of exponential growth. Moving on. We're going to now, we're going to shift. I'm going to call this topic shifting. Shifting exponential functions. That means moving up, moving down, moving right, moving left. The good news is all the rules you've learned about shifting functions always apply. When you add a number to the x, you're always shifting it to the opposite direction. We add, we go left. 
If we subtract, we go right. If the function has a number outside of it plus a number, we're shifting up. If we're taking away a number at the end, we're shifting it down. Those are the common ones. If you take a function and you multiply a negative in front, it goes upside down. Remember, like, if we looked at y equals x squared versus y equals negative x squared, it flips upside down across the uh, x-axis. If only the x is getting the negative, it flips over the y-axis. What else can we talk about? Here's my A that we didn't have earlier in the other lesson that they definitely wrote A all the time. If A is a number that the absolute value of it is greater or less than 1, we call that a, a vertical compression. I called it a shrink, you know, like it's a vertical shrink. It pushes it down, it compresses it. We've had that before when the number was less than 1, like uh, y equals 2 thirds x squared. Even if it was y equals negative 2 thirds x squared, it becomes fat and wide. And if the number is going to be greater than 1, like this doesn't matter that it was negative, it just didn't matter. I just meant it flipped it upside down. It's going to be a, a, a vertical uh, stretch. So we'll talk about those. The harder one is when we talk about stretching it horizontally. You're looking at, well, what number is being multiplied by the x inside the function? If that number is less than 1, whether it's negative or positive, you take the absolute value, then we call that a, a horizontal stretch. And if that number is greater than 1, that's a compression, a horizontal compression. It means it gets skinnier. Those are hard ones to do. All right, directions for this one is just talk about, uh, identify what the parent function is, and describe the transformations. So as I look at this one here, okay, B is a 2. Since b is a 2, this is called an exponential growth. Uh, next thing I can see is since I'm taking away 3 from the whole picture, this, this causes it to shift down 3 units. The x is being added 1. Since we're adding 1 to x, that means we're shifting, wait for it, left 1 unit. So if I was to just think about it, here is y equals 2 to the x. Here it is, generically. And this is what's happening. This function here that went through 0, 1 will go down 3. 1, 2, 3. And that same point that I put down here, 3 down, has to shift left 1. So it actually goes left 1. So the, the real graph of that function is going to look like this. Uh, I gotta make sure what else goes down. There we go. It's gonna do something like that because it has to shift left and it has to shift down. So that would be that function here, at least roughly. Okay, he didn't ask us to graph, so I won't graph the rest. This is less than one, so it's a decay. What happens to this decay? It shifts up one. 
and it shifts right five. And what does this do? Flips over X axis. Okay. There's a lot to chew with this page. All right. Uh, okay, I see he's, he's throwing a lot of stuff at us on this one. This causes it to shift down seven units. This X is taking away two, so it means it shifts right two units. This means it's going to be a growth. The, th the negative means flip over the x-axis. And last but not least, the 3 means it's going to be a vertical stretch. A vertical stretch. That's a mouthful. What we should do is graph this function just 4 to the x, compare it. y equals 4 to the x. And then graph every one of these things one at a time to see what it does. That would be a good activity for you to do. Is go ahead and do the next one, do y2, 4 to the x minus 7. And see if it does go down 7. And then do y3... 4 to the x minus 2 minus a 7 and see if it does go to the right. Then go ahead and do y4 negative 4 to the x minus 2 minus and see if it flips over the x axis and then do y5 put a negative 3 times the 4 to the x minus 2 minus 7 and see what happens if we do get a stretch. Maybe I'll do that at the end, just to put all that on there and see all those steps working. That'd be a good one to, to do, actually. All right, uh, what transformations are going here? Okay, E is an irrational number bigger than one, so it's gonna be a growth. Uh, plus five means Shift up five units. There's nothing being added to the X. So it does not shift left or right. But there is a minus in front of it. That means what happens is it flips over the Y axis. It flips this negative X, causes it to flip over y-axis. Then there's a number in front of e. It's four-thirds, and four-thirds is bigger than one, so it's going to be a vertical st uh, stretch. Why, they're getting really complicated here. Five. Okay. Uh... Shift down nine units. Look what's happening here. Now, there's a trick here. He's trying to trick you. You think that it's a minus four, which would normally mean shift to the right four. But there's a negative out front of this parenthesis, so it's really a negative x plus four. I think it shifts for left. I think this negative here, 
flip over the Y. Growth. Vertical. Stretch. The only way you can get this in your head is if you actually graph them with your calculator and prove that I'm right or wrong. DK, flip over x-axis. Uh, oof. There is a 4 in front of the x. Horizontal. Oh. I want to call it a horizontal... Horizontal, let's take a, a cheat sheet up here. Let's see. Right here, the number, is that where we're looking at? A number in front of the X, if it was greater than one, compre horizontal compression. I wanted to say a stretch, so I was going to be wrong because it's it's greater than one. So I'm glad I looked up there. Horizontal compression. Because that number is bigger than what the absolute value of four is four, which is greater than one. That one doesn't come up very often. We just don't see it very often. But this author wants us to jump through all the hoops. Okay. Uh, e makes it a growth. Plus four means shift up four. This minus means flip over the x-axis. That number multiplied in front of the x, since one half or the absolute one half is less than one, it's a horizontal stretch. Yikes. It's, oh, I didn't say if it was a growth or not. Yeah, I did. Number eight. Three-fourths is less than one, so it's a decay. This minus means flip over the x-axis. This minus one means shift down one. And now I'm looking at this problem and I think I made a mistake above because I don't want to distribute the three. I think I distributed a negative before. This thing, the three is pulled out for a reason. It's going to shift left two. Oh boy. Okay, so anything else? I miss oh the three itself means a horizontal compression because it's bigger than one. So let me go find that problem where I I think I gave you the wrong answer. Let's see. Where was it at? Where were you, you dirty dog? Let's see. Oh there it is. I'm not going to distribute that after all. So let's ignore this. I'm going to not shift it to the... Did I even write it? Yeah, right here I wrote. I didn't write it down somewhere. If I keep the negative outside of it, like it was, then this makes it go to the right four. Shifts right four units. It's still going to have a flip over the y-axis because there's that negative in front of the x. All right. I, oh, there's what he... That's wrong, so take that off. Okay. And, and every one of these, what I didn't do, it said identify the parent function. So I should have done that for 
step A should have been like the parent function of this was 2 to the x. The parent function for this is y is 1 half to the x. The parent function for number 3 was y is 4 to the x. And number 4, answer A would be y equals to e to the x is your parent. Everything else added to it was shifting it, changing it, transforming it. A for number 5 was y is 2 to the x. I think you got the point. It's the next page. All right, graph each function. All right, so, and identify the characteristics. What I like to do is do a rough graph of the parent. So, my parent will be y is 3 to the x. So, let me just do that in red. 3 to the x has to be a growth going through 0, 1. So, there it is close enough it's just a rough graph okay I know it could be steeper than that but what's happening to the parent let's take a look right here I've got down four I've got right one that's it down four right one so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this dot here, one, two, three, four, right, one. I'm going to draw it right here. And you know what else changes? This horizontal asymptote on the parent, which is one underneath the dot, would stay the same, one underneath the dot. See that? So now I know my graph looks like this. Goes towards this, boom. It goes up this way. Very simple. So the answer is not the red. If you want to go back and erase that, you can. And say, ah, I was just cheating here. That doesn't really, that's not true. But I, I, I personally would not go ahead and erase that. That's just what I use to help graph the new function. So its domain, again, is all real numbers. That doesn't change. Its range now, be careful. It's not greater than zero. Its y is greater than, interesting point. If the asymptote went down four, because it was a minus four in front, everything was a minus four, so that's a negative four. Y is greater than a negative four. Y-intercept used to be zero, one, but not anymore. Now it's 1, negative 3. 1, negative 3. Its horizontal asymptote used to be y is 0, but now it's y equals to a negative 4. It's increasing. That doesn't change. Negative infinity to infinity. Decreasing never. As x goes to the right forever f of x does go up forever. As x goes to the left forever, f of x approaches the horizontal asymptote negative 4. Not so bad, was it? All right. I'll do one more here with you. The parent is y equals one half x. It's a decay. So let me do it with a light color. Zero one used to be the why that's too too thick. I'll just use the regular color. Zero one. But this caused it to shift up to it does not shift left or right, but it does flip over the x-axis. Flip 
over x-axis. That's all that happens. So that dot, well, remember, and it was a decay. It's a decay. So it had a, a horizontal asymptote here. But this dot, now I'm going to do it in red. This flips over here. And this decay that looked like this has to flip over. So it's going to do this. Here's my picture. It may be it, it, it something like that. Because it had to flip over. Was a decay that flipped over the horizontal line of y is zero. So there you go. Domain, all real numbers. Range, y is less than zero. Because it goes down now, it doesn't go up. Y intercept used to be zero, one, now it's zero, negative one. Asymptote still is y is zero. Increases, ha ha. It does increase from negative infinity to infinity. Decreases, none. As x goes to the right forever, f of x goes to zero. It still goes to zero. As it climbs up, it still goes to zero. As x goes to the left, f of x goes to negative infinity. It's a little different. Oh, one more. Let's see. Okay, it's a decay. Because the parent function is y equals one fourth to the x, so it's a decay. But the plus five means left five, and the three means it's a vertical stretch. So my original parent had a y-intercept there, and it was a decay, so it was going to do this. There's my original parent function, something like that. So now the new function shifts left 5, so that dot here goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Has to go here. So this still is going to go towards the same asymptote. Okay, but since it's a vertical stretch of three, this dot goes one, two, three. It's actually going to be up here. So even though it goes through here, it's got to go, it's got to cut through. There's your stretch. Gets a little complicated. Be a bit easier to erase everything I don't like. But that zero one became a negative. Five four. Negative five four. That's the hard part. Negative five four. That's where that dot became. Uh where is the the y intercept? The y intercept is gonna be a little harder. Y intercept happens when x is zero. So 3 times 1 fourth to the 0 plus 5 is zero, 1 fourth to the 5th. So that would take a calculator to know exactly how small it is. But it's small. 1 fourth times 1 fourth times 1 fourth times 1 fourth. 4, 16, 31, 64. Very small. It's almost, it's almost touching the, the uh, x-axis. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, well, there's still more problems. I think I've done enough for you. Uh, play around. You only got three others I haven't tried, and then there's that homework. This is your homework. All right. I'm going to let you loose. Have fun.